Mani Padre, Zipiri, Ehi, Spiritu Sancti. Amen. So uh, today, we're, we, uh, before we talk about St. John Bosco, um, I'd like to mention Blessed Angelus de Scarpetti. Uh, he was an Augustinian friar in the 1200s. Uh, he was a missionary to England, uh, preached and founded monasteries, and a very interesting um, kind of miracle for which he is known. He once intervened on behalf of a man uh, who had been sentenced to death arguing that the death sentence was not necessary or even good and the, the man's life should be spared. However, the authorities ignored him and executed the man anyway. Blessed Angelus de Scarpetti then brought the man back to life. And at that point, the civil authorities were stuck because the man's sentence of death had already been carried out. So he was now a free man. So actually getting sentenced to death was better for that guy than life in prison because now he was free and, and going about doing his thing. So that's just a rather, and, but what is interesting is that the, 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 the courts had to recognize that, yeah, I mean, here was a living man and the death sentence had legally been executed, so nothing could be done. So I guess just for us, when we, perhaps if we fear the civil authorities, uh, remember that their power only extends so far, uh, but God's power is infinite. So let, uh, let us keep that in mind. Uh, so St. John Bosco uh, was born in the year 1815 to poor Italian parents, and his father died when he was only two years old, leaving his mother uh, to raise him and his older brother uh, by herself. But she did this very well. She was very pious and taught him his prayers and gave the good example of uh, sharing their house or their food and even their house with people who were poorer than they were. Um, St. John Bosco had a dream when he was only nine years old of a majestic man and woman, and, uh, who, and he himself was surrounded by young boys roughly uh, playing and cursing. Uh, the man said, you will convert these your friends, and the woman said, be strong, humble, and robust, and when the time comes, you will understand everything. So he didn't you know, know it as, as a young boy of nine, but it, it seems that the, the man and woman were our, our Lord and Our Lady. Well, this dream early on in his life profoundly impacted him from then on, and in fact, he would continue to have such visions and dreams throughout his life, and it would, they would eventually lead him to write his book, uh, The Forty Dreams of Don Bosco, which uh, uh, describes his work with young boys. It's a, ver a very good book. <clears throat> But uh, uh, so a short time after this, uh, 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 John Bosco was 10 years old when he saw a group of circus performers doing tricks and he was fascinated. So he watched them attentively and learned some of the tricks on his own. Uh, later on, he performed a magic show for his friends, the street boys, and they cheered and clapped. Well, so St. John had kind of done all the tricks he knew how to do, but everybody was still looking at him. So what did he do then? He remembered the sermon he'd heard that morning at Mass, and he began to repeat it to the young boys in the street. So already, he is, uh, has that evangelizing uh, spirit, even at only 10 years old. Um, so he, he was already thinking about being a priest, and um, John Bosco was one of those very perceptive and intelligent persons, and he would watch his friends' attitudes. He would watch them and see what their disposition was, and try to um, defuse fights before they began, or when, if they did break out, he would, he would uh, be the referee uh, between the fights between boys to make sure it, it, it proceeded properly. And even older boys, much older than he was, uh, would listen to him on account of his wisdom. Right? Wisdom is one thing that even, even very young people can have. And uh, it's an interesting thing. Everybody respects wisdom, right? no matter who, where, who it comes from. Um, that's why they have um, like that, that saying, from the mouth of babes, right, comes truth, because even young children, can, if they see the truth and they speak it, um, truth is powerful, even, even if a young person has it. Uh, but he wasn't, uh, didn't receive good treatment from everybody. Um, the, the, the boys in the street, they respected John Basso because, um, you know, of his example, but his older brother uh, treated him harshly. His older brother had had to act as a father since their own father had died, uh, but John Bosco's desire to become a priest 
uh, was offensive to his older brother. His brother told him that, you know, you're just, we're, we're, we're poor, we're always going to be poor, and you're turning your back on the lower class of society by trying to enter a higher class of society. You know, we don't think of it here in this country, but for most of human history, if you were born poor, that was where you stayed. That was where you belonged. And it didn't matter what you did or how capable you were, if you were poor, that was your place. And anything outside of that was, was, was not appropriate. So, so uh, John, John Bosco's older brother, and this is, the, this is 19th century Italy, and that, that attitude is still prevalent. So this was, uh, he, in fact, his, his brother would treat him so uh, harshly that when John Bosco was 12 years old, he, he left home and, uh, uh, um, and looked, looked for work on his own, living on his own. Uh, well, after two years of working in a vineyard, uh, St. John Bosco met a priest willing to help him study for the priesthood, and this priest's name was St. Joseph Cafasso. Uh, his, his feast day is sometime in the, in the summer, I think, July or August or something. Um, uh, St. John Bosco needed remedial education since he had grown up poor, so after six years of working and studying, uh, John had gotten enough of an education to enter the seminary, which he did. And then another six years later, and he was ordained a priest. Uh, he worked first in the city of Turin, helping the poor. And um, as I mentioned, the, um, the, the, uh, the kind of like the class system was, was still in place. And, but the industrial age had, had, had come about in the world, and, and conditions for the working class were deplorable, um, especially um, with, with the orphans. Uh, thousands of poor people had moved into the city looking for work, and they lived in slums, and a lot of times, you know, uh, uh, people either, uh, like St. John, uh, Bosco, he had to leave home because his older brother was, was treating him harshly. Uh, many other young boys were in the same position. Their fathers had died, or both parents had died, and they were orphans, or their, their, their parents were abusive, and they ran away from home, or, or all kinds of things. So the streets were filled with, with these young boys from the ages of, like, between 12 and 18 that just didn't have anybody to care for them. Uh, John Bosco found that in visiting prisons, he was disturbed to see these young boys even in prisons. And he knew, right? He knew these young boys, they weren't bad, uh, they weren't evil, they weren't wicked, they just needed somebody to help them and discipline them and show them how to live properly. So um, he became a pioneer in social reform, right? Trying to find work and shelter for these orphans and trying to help keep them out of prisons and then trying to remedy the injustice of the class system to help poor people earn better, better uh, wages and earn, so they could live better lives, so people wouldn't be on the streets. Um, but, uh, uh, um, but this is all, of course, in order to help people's souls. It wasn't, it wasn't so much that he was concerned with their, the difficulty of their living conditions as much as he was concerned with they were, they, they, they were so busy looking at, I need a place to stay, I need food, I need shelter, you know, I need, I need uh, to, to protect myself from the cold and the heat. They didn't care about catechism. Right? They weren't learning catechism. Kids had that catechism class. I don't even know where my next meal is going to come from. How can I think about catechism? So that, that is how it happens. It is that the church, like, like it says in the epistle of St. James, what good is it to say to somebody, go be warm, be well fed, you know, but, but do nothing for them. But what good is it, on the other hand, to say, here, have a good meal, be warm, and be well fed, uh, but lose your soul because you don't know anything about, about Christ. So it, it takes both. And that is what St. John Bosco did. <clears throat> So uh, he would kind of revert back to his childhood method of, of street performing. He would find out where groups of boys would live, and it's terrible. They, these boys are 12 and 14 years old, and they're like working as um, they're stone cutters, they're carpenters, they're doing, doing plaster, they're doing all this industrial work during the day, and at night, they're sleeping under bridges, they're sleeping in parks, they're here, they're there, right? They're forming gangs. Uh, it was just absolutely deplorable. So John Bosco would go and find where groups of boys would hang out, and then he would do magic tricks for them. They would be delighted, and then he would preach, right? A little trick he learned when he was 10. So that was very, very efficient and, and very um, 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 necessary, as I mentioned, because the, these boys, there was no other way they were going to get catechism. And with the young, they're like sponges. They're just ready, like, especially when nobody's told them anything, they'll listen. They'll be like, okay, yeah, that, that makes sense. And then they're formed. They're formed for life. So it was a tremendously important work John Bosco was doing. Um, he, in fact, ended up um, uh, founding a religious institute dedicated to teaching boys. 
and he called it the Order of St. Francis de Sales, or, or the, known as the Salesians, and that's an order that is still very much active today in teaching uh, uh, young children. Uh, but this just, of course, didn't start out as a religious institute. It started out as St. John Bosco um, sharing his own house with uh, a number of other boys. I think like he had 12 boys living with him, and then it was 24, and then it was 36. And he eventually had so many boys living in his own house, his mother uh, came and moved in with him to help take care of them. And um, every year, uh, he, he increased the amount of, of young boys he, he was taking care of. Uh, by the time, I think it was in 1860, 20 years after, after being a priest for 20 years, he was housing 800 boys. Uh, 800. He had found va various houses for all these different boys. But it was hard. He, 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 he endured a lot of opposition uh, because, um, well, for, for one, one, one part, uh, um, uh, whole neighborhoods would kick him out because imagine having 800 boys coming home, you know, after work every day. Right, and then playing in the street and all that, it was a madhouse. So it was difficult to get other people to, um, you know, neighbors and so on. But not just that. Um, the, the police chief, chief in the city accused his efforts as being political subversion, um, as trying to create a revolutionary element. Because a lot of that was going on in the, in the 1800s, especially in Italy and all over France. So he's, he was accused of political subversion, um, you know, starting like, you know, some kind of, you know, uh, um, what do you like, like a, a thug group. Um, even the church hierarchy were, were opposing him. They thought of him as a loose cannon and a wheeler dealer. And some parish priests accused him of stealing their boys, uh, you know, because they, they, would, they wouldn't go to the parish catechism. They would go to St. John Bosco's catechism because um, it was more fun. I mean, you got 800, 800 you know, friends here. Man, that's, that's a good time, right? So as you can see, just a lot, of, um, a lot of opposition. And he was just trying to help, right? Even the people he was trying to help, the street urchins and those boys, some of them were criminals. You know, you, you get even, even one in a hundred, you know, uh, that, bad actors, you know, and, and that's not going to be good. So St. John Bosco had to endure. He was robbed by the boys he was trying to help. He was insulted, beaten, stabbed, and shot at, right, by the, these, these boys he's trying to help. And it's not every single one, but, but again, you know, you, you know it's, it's going to happen with that, that helping that many uh, poor, poor urchins. Um, but, you know, his virtuous behavior, in spite of all, all this mistreatment, that proves the sincerity of his work. And, and it, it doesn't matter. Look at any, any pioneer in the church in, in either social reform or, or ecclesiastical reform especially, uh, whatever it is, or even in just, just like um, even um, um, Francis de Sales and St. Jane Francis de Chantal, they met opposition because she started an order of nuns that went, to, that went around, uh, were not cloistered and helped people. And they said, well, what is this never been done before? You can't do that. So it doesn't matter what you do in the church. There's always opposition to, to, to um, uh, new methods and advancements. There just always is. So um, uh, John Bosco, in addition to helping young boys, would work with orphan girls and founded a group of religious sisters to, to do for the girls what he was doing for the boys. And um, they were called the Daughters of Mary, Help of Christians. Now, despite all, the, despite all this, 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 these prodigious efforts that he's doing here, I mean, caring for 800 boys, you know, preaching catechism, going out all over the place, I mean, that, that's a life's work right there. But in addition to that, uh, St. John Bosco was an excellent historian. And uh, he wrote a number of works on the lives of the saints, uh, apologetics, dialogues, articles, and so on, in addition to the 40 dreams of John Bosco, as I've mentioned. So he would, he would find time, somehow, to write 80 written works over the course of his life. 80, right? Sermons, not just sermons, but, but, but uh, like I said, apologetic dialogues and so on. So incredible. Uh, St. John Bosco would eventually finally die on uh, today, January 31st, uh, in 1888, and he was 73 years old. Um, his funeral was attended by thousands, and there was a popular demand for his canonization, as you can imagine. Uh, the Archdiocese of Turin investigated, and witnesses were called on both sides. And, um, you know, Don Bosco, as, as mentioned, had many opponents, including some cardinals, who blocked his, who wanted to block his canonization. Uh, but Pius XI, however, had known uh, Bosco personally, and would end up canonizing him on Easter Sunday, uh, which is April, April 1st in 1934, and giving him the title Father and Teacher of the Youth. 
Uh, so we should uh, think, or uh, I guess uh, keep in mind from this, this uh, life of Don Bosco, um, just how much effect one person can have, right? How much one person really inspired with the love of Christ. I mean, 800 boys, and that was just at, at one time. I mean, it was, it was thousands and thousands of young boys that Don Bosco gave a father to them when they didn't have one. And isn't, isn't that what Christ, you know, came to do? He who sees me sees the Father. And he who sees Don Bosco, right, sees Christ. That's what it's supposed to be. That's what it's supposed to be like, is, is that, you know, as St. Saint, Saint Paul says, it is no, no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. What would Christ do if he came back to earth and was here living and walking among us? Um, that's what we should take as our vocation is if Christ was, you know, a, a priest, if Christ was a carpenter, if Christ was a whatever your job is, if, you know, Christ was, you know, uh, or, or the Blessed Virgin was a mom and working in her house, what would that look like? That's what you're supposed to model. That's what we're supposed to be like. And so people can see us and then see Christ or the Blessed Virgin or whatever it is, and, and they see God and say, okay, I don't know what, what religion you are, but I want to be part of it. If that's, if that's what your religion does for people, that's what I want to be, right? That's what we should be looking for, striving for. That's what St. John Bosco did. And then what did he do? He affected the lives of thousands of orphans. Rather than being in prisons and criminals, you know, they became probably good, good fathers on their own, uh, you know, helped out society rather than dragging it down and, 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 and kept the faith and passed the faith on to so many other thousands and thousands, right? That's how it works. But no servant is above his master. No servant is above his master. And what did it, it cost St. John Bosco that opposition? Even in the church, probably even from sincere people who just didn't understand what he was doing or misunderstood it and so on. So we shouldn't take it so hard. Uh, you know, if we are opposed in our life, well, I just wanted to do the right thing. Okay, so did Christ. And look what happened to him. So um, we shouldn't be discouraged by that. Even in the, in the, in the modern church, which is, which is so corrupt and there's so much evil, um, and so much opposition, you know, we should bear that patiently. Even, even Christ was opposed. I mean, he, he was opposed to, the, to death. Um, so anything less than that, we, we have to be willing to suffer um, uh, patiently. And um, it didn't stop John Bosco, right? I mean, it, it made his life difficult, but, but difficulty just gives us the opportunity for more virtue, right? More patience and, and, and charity and long-suffering and so on, um, all of which are to his everlasting glory in heaven. So uh, uh, don't be discouraged. Uh, uh, seek to imitate Christ in your own life. Um, and, and, and we don't know the influence we may have. Hundreds and thousands, who knows, later on in life can say that, you know, they benefited and perhaps even that their souls were saved because of us and our example. Yeah, and that, that's going to be the, greater, the, the greatest reward we can possibly have, right? When we see that on the other side in heaven, you know, we wouldn't trade it for anything. Uh, so, so keep that in mind. Uh, pray for that, that grace. Uh, and St. John Bosco, pray for us. May God bless you all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.